Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pinniped Community Meeting. Today's date is October 21st, 2021. If you're watching this recording from home, just a reminder that we do meet every first and third Thursday of the month at 9 a.m. Pacific time. It's an opportunity for you to come and meet the maintainers, listen in to what they're working on, provide feedback, and also bring up any questions that you might have on using the, the tools, uh, the actual tool. If uh, you do have something you wish to discuss with the team, you'll just add that down at the discussion topic section in the agenda here. If you're unable to join us for any of these meetings live, you can find us in the Kubernetes Slack workspace within the Pinniped channel. And if you aren't already a member of the Kubernetes Slack workspace, you'll just need to send a request for an invitation to gain access. You can also find us on Twitter at Project Pinniped. Whenever you're interacting with us uh, in the community, um, whether it be GitHub or Twitter or Slack or in these meetings, we ask that you please read and abide by our code of conduct. Also, uh, when you attend these meetings, we would like to list out who is attending and keep those lines of communication open and see who might be using Pinniped so we can kind of get a better understanding of some use cases there. So just list out your name and any organization that you're representing, as well as uh, filling out this GitHub discussion, adding a comment here and how your organization is using Pinniped. You can put your logo on there. We will add it to our adopters page for some cross promotion. And on to announcements. Uh, pretty light on announcements this week. Just a reminder, Pinniped is participating, participating in Hacktoberfest. And what Hacktoberfest is, is a month long celebration helping others who might not be familiar with open source or familiar with doing any pull requests within GitHub, getting them more comfortable with contributing and getting started with an open source. And the way that Pinniped is helping out is that we have our repo labeled as Hacktoberfest showing that we are participating. And we have an issue here that has been labeled with Hacktoberfest. And you will, if you're wanting to participate, you can go in here and look to see how you can um, work on it and add your own pull request to, to this particular issue. And once you get four pull requests submitted throughout the month of October, you will be given a limited edition t-shirt and some stickers via um, DigitalOcean. Okay. On to status updates regarding the project roadmap. So I just put in here the one thing that we have going on for October, the improving security posture, supervisor token refresh fails when the upstream refresh token no longer works for OIDC. Um, anybody want to go over that particular item and where we are with that? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I worked on a little earlier, but Ryan's mostly been working on uh, the OIDC part of things. I think uh, the initial uh, story of just when you refresh, making sure that the refresh token that you got from the upstream OIDC provider uh, is valid. Um, is done and uh, now I believe Ryan's working on garbage collection um, and making sure that everything's revoked properly. Um, so that's uh, making good progress, I think. Um, I don't know exactly when we're thinking of releasing that and maybe the LDAP stuff, but um, 
would be I don't know if I had to guess I'd say early November <laughs> okay no worries um thank you Margo I was just going to make a comment. So I did uh, review the initial work that Ryan and Margo have done. Uh, looks solid. Uh, I just, I think I have, I just need to go back and look at, uh, after I'd gone offline uh, last night, uh, Ryan had addressed some of my comments. Uh, so I think we're at a state where like the very first part of the work is basically ready to be merged in. Um, and then what that will enable is that um, Ryan and Margo, uh, or it, it opens up more than one parallel track of work. Uh, yeah. So whoever can uh, uh, can work on that um, going forward. Um, I think anything else? Yeah, uh, I've sort of started working locally on um, parallelizing some of the work to get LDAP and Active Directory upstream refresh checks. Um, but once we have it on, once we have that in a good state and on uh, main, it makes it a little easier to do those two separately. Yeah, and we, we wanted to kind of get it into the state because uh, various folks on the team will be uh, on PTO coming up. So we want to we want to get into the state, get something merged in that uh, it's still releasable. We are not merging anything in the main that we could not like make a release out of. It's just uh, it's, you know, it's, a, it's an intermediate state that's still better than it's there today. But yeah, things are looking good. Uh, looking for uh, looking good progress there. Um, I, I don't know, Margot, if you've seen the Slack thread on the Plimpad Slack. I had. Oh, with with a uh, Scott talking about his scripts. Yeah, right. so to give anyone watching the recording context, um, uh, I, I just happen to think of um, one concern with the Active Directory work that's coming up is our, our CI system for Active Directory is one global singleton. Uh, so it's you know one instance of AD that's uh, in AWS, I think somewhere. And you know, it has a very particular config. Uh, it's very much a pet and not not a not a cattle. Uh, and um, the the uh, it's okay today because all of our tests against it are completely read only. Uh, so it's fine. You know, it's it exists in a pristine state, and we can sort of test against that pristine state and hit all of the functionality. Um, with the AD upstream refresh, um, one of the core things you want to check is, you know, if you're using Pinniped, but during the act of using it, once you already have logged in once, if your user was in some way disabled, deleted, or otherwise put into a state that we don't consider to be valid, uh, we want to observe that occurring and stop letting you use Pinniped, okay? That in, to do that in a real integration test inherently involves causing a mutation to Active Directory, right? Which then puts us into a strange place because our AD system, which so far has been completely read-only from the perspective of our tests, now has to have some kind of rights and going on. Yeah, there's some, we, it wouldn't be quite as good, but we could also consider uh, doing a similar trick to what Ryan did um, with his integration tests where uh, he modified the storage. So we, you know, store the upstream refresh token so we can, so we can use it later and uh, he modified the storage to make it uh, garbage and then performed a refresh and showed that the garbage didn't work. Um, we could try to it's a little weird, but we could we could try to, you know, make the storage point at a deactivated user. Yeah. Already yeah. deactivated. Um 
Yeah, I had thought of that. That seemed like a little strange and sketch. Like I did, I was a little worried that that would put us in a, like at, at that point, I would feel the need to have a, like a manual test where like I manually went and like did something with AD and was like, all right, cool. Like it actually works. Like when this happens for real. Uh, it, yeah. But yeah, it's not, it, it's not a bad approach. It's, it, um, I, the the sort of the discussion I'm thinking about is do we do we need to invest a little bit more in our AD and Freda make it a little bit more flexible so that way as we move forward we don't like like I think the thing that Ryan did for the upstream refresh is actually like effectively correct because all, all it is is like we have some arbitrary string that we've stored and if we just happen to make it slightly different. So the upstream won't be happy with it anymore. So any, you know, it it sort of emulates that really well. Uh, the the stuff with AD is going to be much more particular, right? Like you're gonna you're supposed to be fetching a user, looking at a particular field, doing bit masks against it. I mean, sure, yeah. If you trick us to looking at the wrong user, maybe it's fine. Um, yeah, and it still doesn't get at um, testing password last. Password change time. Oh yeah, yeah. You can. There, there's not really any way to do that if you're not entirely taking out dates everywhere. <laughs> like if we're, we want to make sure that if if you log in to pen and pad, and then your password changes, and then we refresh, we should see that your password has changed since you've logged in and you should no longer be logged in. Um, and so that's kind of hard to fake out. So yeah, it might be worth trying to look at like Scott scripts. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, um, I'm sure if we, I'm sure if we forced ourselves, we could maybe come up with the fake that one. It, it's more of like, a, would it make more sense to just bite the bullet and come up with a more robust way to set up our AD stuff? What, whether I, I did really like Scott's suggestion, which was uh, basically make your Active Directory multi-tenant, like have basically different OUs or whatever for different tests or whatever, and you know put everything inside that bucket. I really like that suggestion. It's just that we 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 don't have the code to do that today. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's some way to do it with PowerShell or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm also wondering if there's some like higher order approach where maybe we could somehow, like somehow if we could maybe get, like basically kind of like global catalog, if we could get something like from AWS where was actually just a series of active directories and we could kind of get a particular ones. I don't, I don't know, maybe that doesn't make sense, but it's, it's the same sort of idea, just maybe at a more active directory global level. Um, but yeah, I, um, I think this is all you know, good stuff to think about because um, the hope here is that, um, you know, if you're using us with AD that we behave like you expect us to behave with AD. Um, but the, the whole like OIDC stuff is just an implementation detail, right? To an end user, they just, they just want the system to behave correctly. Did we, did we want to go on to the home chart discussion? I'm um, just making sure there wasn't any further comments on that. Uh, so I was curious as <clears throat> if there was any updates regarding that Helm chart discussion that we had in the last meeting, last community meeting, if we heard anything from Scott regarding his um, reaching out to Bitnami, or if there was any discussion you wanted to share with the community. So uh, we did reach out internally to Vietnami uh, and, uh, you know, I, I had a chance to talk to some of their folks and uh, 
we we really want to understand um, you know how uh, they host the charts what what, what sort of versions etc so we have planned a discussion um, but uh, not yet done yeah so it's in the works okay that sounds great sounds like there's at least some movement there um, is there anything else that y'all want to bring up before we end today's meeting? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, if you can pull up the roadmap, uh, Nancy. Yeah, if you scroll down, um, I've updated the roadmap with uh, a lot of what we are thinking uh, and focusing on, um, which is basically security hardening and improving the security posture for the project. So we've come up with a list of uh, features that will help and enhance uh, the security posture. Uh, would definitely like um, contributions and um, from the community if if there is any interest, if there are any use cases that this will solve, we'd be really happy to hear from them. Okay, great, thanks Anjali. Okay, anything else? All right, uh, well, thank you again for joining today's meeting. And if you're watching from home, I uh, can encourage you to come and join us live. Again, we meet every first and third Thursday of the month at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah.